Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me here on the Greedery YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be showcasing a few new products that we have coming to the shop as part of our garden party collection. I'll be using the new Sips Tea Stamp and Cut Combo along with the Tipsy Strip Die and some other new products as we go along. We'll be creating this fun pop-up interactive easel card. So I'm going to start off by sponging some ink onto some die cut teacups. I've die cut all four of the cups from the Sips Tea combo. I actually die cut them twice and one set I'm going to snip away the inside portion of the cup right at that slit and I'm going to use that as a mask to add some inking to what is kind of the inside of those teacups. But first of all I'm going to just sponge some light ink on the base of each then I'll use the others that I have trimmed as masks to add some inking to the insides of the teacups. The cup I showed on camera used Kitsch Flamingo ink. I repeated the same process off screen with the other teacups from the set using tattered rose, tumbled glass, and cracked pistachio inks. Next I'm going to pull out my fine china stamp set. This is another new product we're releasing as part of our garden party collection. I'm going to use this small leaf and rose image and I'm going to stamp that onto a couple of the teacups. I'll be using rustic wilderness for the leaves, tattered rose for the rose base, and then worn lipstick for the rose detail. Next we're going to be using the Sips Tea stencil and some metallic pigment powder to add some detailing to the teacups. Before we do that we want to make sure that all of our ink is completely dry so that we don't have this powder sticking where we don't want it. So I'm going to hit my die cuts with my heat tool and I'm also going to rub over them with this anti-static embossing pouch. So as I mentioned, we'll be using the Sips Tea stencil, which is this one-piece stencil right here. I'm also going to be using some metallic pigment powder. You can use a variety of different things here. The one I am using specifically is from Luminart. I'm not sure this is still a current product. I've had this in my stash for a really long time, but there's a lot of uh, very comparable things out there like um, pearlescent powders, pigment powders, just something gold and pretty and metallic. I'm also going to be using a glue pad, and actually instead of a glue pad, I am actually going to be using the refill that goes along with the glue pad. This is just kind of a liquid glue. You can use it for stamping. We're going to be using it for um, stenciling here. This is just a little finger sponge dauber, and I'm going to use my glue pad refill and just add a few drops of that refill right onto that sponge dauber. Before I start applying that onto my stencil, I am going to tap it onto a scrap of paper just to remove any of the excess ink. If you have too, or ink, or I should say glue, if your dauber is too wet, you can get some seepage underneath the stencil and then you'll end up with a little bit of a messy image. Now I'll go ahead and just basically stencil. Um, you can't see it, so it's a little bit... You just kind of have to watch to make sure that you're getting all of the areas. And you can always go back and add a little more if you get to the part where you're sprinkling your powder and you see that you missed an area. You can, of course, just go ahead and reposition your stencil and add just a little bit more to the areas that need it. To apply the powder to our stenciled areas, I'm just using a brush. Uh, just any brush will do. And then we can go ahead and tap off the excess. And to really clean up the die cut, you may have noticed earlier when I was stenciling, I had my die cut on this pad. This is a gel press pad. It's very sticky. It's washable. I'm going to press my die cut onto this mat and it's going to pull off all of the excess powder and just really clean up that die cut nice and easy. I love these mats for all sorts of things, including stenciling, inking, and then this little cleanup trick is just awesome as well. I repeated the same process for the other three teacups, again using the Sips Tea stencil and the same method of applying the metallic powder. Now we're going to create our stack of tipsy teacups. We're going to stack them largest to smallest. You can tell this by looking at the handle position as well. They switch side to side. I also have my tipsy strip cut, which includes the strip and the three topper circles. So to start off, we're going to flip the largest cup, the bottom, to the back side, and we're going to adhere the tipsy strip to the back side, and we're going to position it right in the center, side to side, and that first little tipsy slot is going to be right above the upper rim of the cup. So you shouldn't see the rim of the cup, it should be just below that first opening. I'm going to secure it in place with a few foam dots. 
These are quarter inch foam dots, which we'll also be stocking in the shop. Then we're gonna flip it around to the front side and we're going to stack our top cups inside of each other by slipping them into those die cut slits at the top of each cup and then flip it around to the back side. You want to start with them all straight and the strip centered side to side. You want each cup positioned so that the bottom of each is just above the slot. So you can see here, you can see the bottom of my cup. I'm gonna position that so it's just above that slot. And then the same thing again with that very top cup. You don't wanna see the bottom of it. You want it just above that opening. Then we can go ahead and put a foam dot inside in the center of each of those openings. Remove the adhesive lining and top it off with the little die cut circles. As I mentioned at the start of this video, we'll be creating a pop-up easel card, but if you wanted to adhere the stack directly to a card front, and you can see how you can make a tipsy stack, you're going to want to add adhesive only to the strip. So I would put foam dots in between each of those openings. You don't want to adhere the cups because obviously they won't be able to move on the tipsy strip. That would be for if you want to adhere it to directly to a card front. But since we're creating a pop-up stand-up stack, we are going to be adding foam adhesive to the upper corners of each of these cups. And I'm going to be backing them with a second cup just to kind of clean it up and make it look nice and tidy front and back. So basically our tipsy strip will be sandwiched between two layers of die cut cups. I'll go ahead and peel away the liners and top these off with their matching cups. If you want, you can also add some liquid adhesive and glue the handle portions together. Now let's turn our stack of two cups into a fun pop-up easel card. I have a filigree frame die cut that I am going to snip apart right at the top of the bottom flourishes. So just using a scissors to snip that apart. Then I'm going to adhere that top portion, the larger portion, to an A2 card base. This is a vertical top fold A2 card base and I'll just go ahead and adhere that to the top. Then I'm going to use my scoring tool and I'm going to score a line right below the edge of that filigree frame. This is going to be the easel portion of our card. Then I'm going to take the piece of the filigree frame that I trimmed off and I'm going to add that to the bottom of my card front just below that scored line. Now we need to put a strip of cardstock on the inside of the card for the easel portion to catch on and so that it'll stand upright. I have just a one inch strip of cardstock the same width as my card. So now we can go ahead and adhere our stack of teacups and we want to make sure that it is adhered only to the portion of the card front that is below that scored fold line. So I'm just gonna add some liquid adhesive and just put a little bit on this bottom cup and make sure that I'm not adding adhesive above the point where that scored fold happens. That way our teacups will stand up when our easel is uh, in the open position. I'm going to embellish our stack of teacups just a little bit more by using the die cut tag that's included in the Sips Tea Stamp and Cut combo. It's like a little tea bag tag and it has also a little string to go along with it. I'm going to stamp a sentiment using the mini stamp set that's also included in the combo. And I'll go ahead and stamp that and we're going to attach this little tag by inserting the little die cut string through that hole and fold the tag glue it shut and tuck it in the top teacup. 
As a last and final step, I'm going to pull out my Brew Tea Full Day stamp set and stamp a sentiment on that strip of cardstock that we adhered to the inside of the card. It's a great place to stamp a sentiment on an easel card because when you pop it up and it's in kind of display mode, that sentiment will show. So I'm using a sentiment that says, wishing you a Brew Tea Full Day. So our card is finished and we have this adorable pop-up card that's fun to display and also fun with the little interactive element. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the new products coming to our shop as part of our garden party collection. This new collection will be available in the shop, thegreetery.com, beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Friday, June 14th.